Hey guys, Bobby here from Wedding Film School, a channel dedicated to educating and inspiring wedding filmmakers. And welcome to the first of many videos in a series all about how to edit your wedding films. In this series, I wanna tackle the entire process from offloading your footage onto your drives, all the way to delivering your films to your client and maximizing your views of your finished product. I'm gonna show you behind the scenes of an actual edit of mine, taking you into my timeline step-by-step step with me and showing you how to not only create an awesome film, but also how to maximize your efficiency and ultimately save yourself time and money. In this first video, I'm going to share how I properly import and organize my footage, a crucial step that has shaved hours off of my editing time. And of course, anything I share in this series is not the only way that things can be done, but over 14 years, it's what I've found to let me efficiently and consistently create the best films for my clients. All right, so here I am in my computer, and for this project, I will be editing in Final Cut Pro X, but plenty of what I'm going to be saying applies no matter what editor you're in. And of course, in this video, like I mentioned, we're talking about importing and organizing your footage to save yourself time down the road. And that actually begins outside of your editor and in your hard drives. I think it's incredibly important to organize your footage and audio well in this part, in this phase, and it makes things easier kind of across the board down the road. I've done some editing for other wedding filmmakers and I've really seen it all from people who organize well, similar to what I do, but maybe in their own way, to people who literally just have a folder and they dump everything in there from every camera. And doing something like that costs you more and more time the more unorganized you are. So you can see here, this is my folder for a wedding and I have a variety of different folders within it. I have one for each camera that we run and then I have an audio folder. I have the drone, which I would count as a camera. And in this one specifically, I do have some time-lapse stuff and some phone stuff that was for kind of the intro part of that wedding that I, that I was editing. And in the audio, I also have it broken down. And my audio, I divide when I offload. And that's important because you know exactly what you know, each card or each device was responsible for. So I know when I get home from a wedding, this lav mic was on the groom, this was on the officiant, this is my DR40 card, my main recorder, and so on and so forth. So organizing that now makes it even quicker in the editor to find the audio that you are looking for and to match it where you need it. So that's pretty much how I organize in the hard drive and it's actually really important once I go into the editor and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new library once I'm in here. I'm gonna name it the couple's name and I'm gonna put it here for now. And I, I don't need this. And then I actually have a wedding template. So I'm gonna go into my other drive here and I'm gonna open that template. And that template works for me because I have different uh, like folders and, and keyword and smart folders and stuff like that all set up. So I'm gonna drag that template into uh, this library. And again, you don't need this template. This is something that I built. Um, actually built it off based off of another template, but you can make this, all the aspects that I use, you can easily make it. And I'll show you here real quick. And so all this template is, is just divided into scenes uh, with smart collections. So all you need to do is you make a smart collection if you wanna make something similar to this. So you just make a smart collection. This one's bridal details, for example. If you double click it, you can see the rules that you have for this collection. So the rule is it is media that has video and audio, although with my uh, aerial ones, it's actually just video because there's no audio. And the format, the next rule, says that the scene is bridal details. And we'll jump into that in a second. So let's go ahead and import this footage. And I'll show you how I divide it up here. So I'm just gonna go into that folder and I'm gonna grab all my footage, my audio, everything that I need for the edit. So going back to why it's so important to have your organization starting earlier on your hard drive. And the main reason is that if I go over here into my folder, you can see that it creates a keyword folder for each folder that I imported. That's why I drag in those folders. 
And what this allows me to do is that if there's a shot that I know that I love or I really want to use or I'm not seeing it for some reason, once I'm in my scenes, either, you know, because I did, probably because I did something wrong, let's be real, I probably misspelled something when I was typing in the scene it was supposed to go in or something, I can revert back to these uh, keyword folders to find, you know, based on the camera that I know it was to find that clip. So then the next step to get this as fluid as possible is to go into these folders. And we're gonna click on a clip, we're gonna to go to the inspector, into the info here, and you wanna make sure it's on extended. So again, our keyword folders are set up for the scenes, so we need to be titling the scenes based on the folders that we have. So scene is bridal details, the one we looked at before. So you can see here in my scenes, there's kind of the standard ones, but like this one started out with morning yoga, you can see. So I could just make a new smart collection for morning yoga if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in bridal prep. So you can see some of my categories here, aerial, bridal details, bridal prep, ceremony, cocktails, dress, uh, which I like to have separate, uh, establishing shots of the ceremony, establishing shots of the reception, family, first look, groom prep, reception, romantics, Slow-mo, um, which I don't really shoot too much slow-mo. You can see there's five clips of this entire wedding and it's only the dress. And then venue and wedding party. And typically I'll add more folders as I go along with an edit. So we're gonna go to the top here and let's see, this stuff here, I could do it as venue or bridal prep, but it's kind of part of that yoga thing in the morning they did. so. I'm gonna go ahead and click the first one, then go until like kind of the end of that category, which is right here. And in the scene, I'm just gonna type in bridal prep, hit enter, and you'll see that it made its own little category there. So let's work through a few more. This is the groom. They were kind of setting up their reception area. It was a unique kind of elopement, but I'm gonna go ahead for could be groom prep or it could be establishing shots reception, but these two I'll put as groom prep. And then this stuff here will be, let's see, this stuff I'll do establishing shots for reception. And let's go through a few of these, which will be venue. And so as you can see, you have the bridal prep, you have the establishing shots, uh, reception, groom prep, and then right here is no data, but it's alphabetical. These are ones I haven't organized, but at the bottom is venue. And of course also, more importantly, if you go into these categories, into these uh, collections, you can see all of those shots there as well. And so if I put in shots for bridal prep or bridal details or whatever from multiple cameras, from multiple of those keyword folders, the A6500 and the A7S2 and whatever, they will all show in this folder under scenes. So you can see now I have everything labeled from all cameras. It's alphabetical, so there's aerial, bridal stuff, you know, groom, stuff like that. And of course you can go into the scenes and you can click on them and just see those specific scenes. And again, if for some reason I can't find something, if I mislabeled it or misspelled it, I can always go back to the keyword folders that were put in there automatically because I imported my folders from my hard drive, which was already organized. Now, I prefer doing it this way with typing in the scenes because it's just how I learn and what I'm used to, but there is another way to do it as well, this keyword uh, editor up here, and you can create shortcuts um, you can see here it's, you know, control one, two, three, four, whatever, and you can assign them with whatever labels you want and you can swap them out. And so it basically allows you to do keywords instead of these scenes to break things up and organize. So you just click on a clip, or I guess let's say we wanted this to be brides, we'll hit command one and we'll put the keyword bride attached to it. And you can search for it that way up in the search bar. The keyword editor can actually be quicker, especially if you're more used to it. But for me, since I have more than nine categories, which is all the keyword editor allows in one sitting, of course you can again, type them out and change them and it will be plenty quick still as well. 
But since I have more than nine already, I just don't really enjoy doing that. So I like doing it the way that I showed the first round. Now, one other important thing before we get to the edit, and this is something you should do from the very beginning, I'm sorry that I'm showing it now, is going into the library and setting where things are saved. And so we're gonna go over here to modify settings. I don't like having my cache and my uh, media and stuff like that. Um, you know, stored in my project file. All right, so I like to have my media in a folder called new media. So I'm gonna just click here and do new folder and do new media. And then the cache or cache, not sure. That's gonna go in a folder called cache. Those are the only two that I change because I don't really do motion content. And then I like my Final Cut backups sitting on my computer hard drive so that I know I have them somewhere else. And then of course the next step before we actually go into the edit is to create the project file, the timeline. And I'm gonna name it here, Emily Chris Highlight Film. And we actually don't do 1920 by 1080. We go to custom and we do 1920 by 816. And everything else should be the same for this, but set it to whatever you want. Hit OK, and now our timeline is ready to go. And that's all there is for the organization video. I will see you guys in the next video.